We've actually sold quite a few of these. They can make you a lot of money, but you've really got to be looking for the right ones. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about something I do run into and something that I always tend to buy. We're talking about vintage rosaries. Now, religious items in general, I've been buying for years, several decades in all honesty, and we do very, very well in religious items in general. Rosaries, though, usually you can find some pretty darn good ones for almost nothing. I don't think I've ever spent more than, say, 2 or $3 for a nice set of rosary beads. This one is Mother of Pearl, M-O-P, and it's sterling. It's marked Italy. It has some other markings on it. All the pieces that are metal are marked the same way as well. Uh, very clearly, this is cut out of Mother of Pearl, out of a very nice shell. It's iridescent in tone and texture. It has a depth of feel to it. It's a really unique one here, too. Something like this, I've actually turned down offers up to 80 bucks already on it. We sell rosaries into the two, two fifty, three hundred plus dollar range throughout the time we've been selling. You get the right ones, you get a unique one, they can sell for some pretty good phenomenal money. Now, where would you find one of these? Church sales, 100%. Around here, they have some jewelry sales that are vintage jewelry from some organizations that do it for charity. We always nab up tons of them there. I've bought many of them, including some really good ones at thrift stores, such as Savers. Even Goodwill sometimes has some nice ones. Garage sales are always good. Flea markets, geez, pretty much anywhere you go. Estate sales especially. Around here, probably 60% or better of every estate sale you go to, you could run into some nice rosaries. Um, Italy would be a great marking on the back of some. Germany or France would be something you also might see. Creed, C-R-E-E-D, is another good brand name to look for. Many of the Creed ones are sterling. Another thing that's a misconception is that they aren't going to be made of good metal, but there are even 18 karat gold ones out there. So value-wise, if you're not looking at them, you just assume they're religious, not going to be made of anything very precious or expensive, you'd be wrong. Some of the vintage ones can sell for a lot of money. If you find one from, say, a priest from the 1790s, 1800s, 1850s, some of those can go for a thousand bucks plus, and they do turn up. What I find is many people don't realize that what they have is that old. They assume it's got to be much newer than what they think it is. So anyway, let's take a look at a few right now. So we're just in eBay, and I'm looking at rosary beads, and that's it, and we're in the collectibles category. Now you could sort it down a little better than this as well, but you don't want to sort it down too far because some of these could even be in the jewelry section. So there are other areas that you can find them. Sometimes they're in everything. I've seen them in jewelry and watches. I've seen them in the antique section. The best place that I have seen is the religious and spiritual section of collectibles. That's usually the best source. Now, one thing you'll notice is there are beads from other religions that are called rosary beads, too, that you'd use for prayer beads. So don't always assume that it's going to be uh, the normal crucifix that you are going to be looking for. Many people may miss these sorts of beads. Now, a lot of these other types of beads can be made of precious metals such as amber. I've seen coral and all sorts of things. Here's an 18 karat solid gold one. They're sterling ones. This top one says it's rhinoceros. Not sure uh, how legality-wise that would be on rhinoceros, but maybe they have paperwork to go with it at that price. Coral, as I said, is another major one. Bakelite. Some of the Bakelite ones can go for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars as well. So you'll actually have to bop down a little bit to find some of the nicer, uh, I guess, Catholic-styled rosary beads like this top one here. There are some high dollar, high value in many of these. Now, some of these you'll see wall. There are some monster size ones that were meant to hang on a wall. There are some that were meant to be hung around like a friar or a nun's neck that would be possibly three or four feet long, the whole uh, actually set of beads. 
So you've just got to understand what they are by the size first and then go from there. Now, some of these are hand carved bovine beads and brass. So basically the main part is bovine, which is cow bone. And the rest of it would actually be just plain old uh, brass. A lot of those would be early. Now the earlier ones are usually some of the most valuable ones very obviously as well. Here's another one, 18 karat gold. Now I've picked a few just to show you some examples of them. Very, very fine, very, very unique. Now this has a mixture of three different kinds of gold. You've got what looks like rose gold, regular gold, and then white gold. It's a very nice set. Sometimes the, the makeup of the item can throw people large number of people that I talk to have no clue that some of these rosaries would be made out of gold, especially 18 karat. Sometimes it's hard to even find the mark of them. I've even run into some that weren't marked but were tested and did test for 10 and 14 karat gold in the past, so you've got to be very careful when you're out there. Now this one sold for $427. So value-wise, there is a value in these for more than one reason. Now this next one is coral. Now if you're unfamiliar with coral, it's usually these random size beads. Sometimes they're faceted, but usually they are not. Um, it looks like a reddish colored pearl to some extent. I guess that's the basic of it. This one is sterling and coral. It does look to be an early one by the looks of it, by the looks of the crucifix and the rest of the uh, decorations on it. 400 bucks basically for this one. Value is there if the material is there. These will be mixed up with ones that were made for kids, with ones that were made out of glass beads. Usually when I run into these, they're just thrown in with a whole bunch of other just common junk rosaries. That's why I say you always have to look through them, every one. I look at every cross to see if the piece is going to be marked 9 out of 10 times, probably 9.5 out of 10 times, it's going to be marked on the crucifix on the back end or on the very front base of it. Now, they made them to match the style of the day. This is an Art Deco one from Mexico, Taxco, which you should recognize it. 1930s or 40s, it is probably, yeah, it is marked 925. It has some other nice, unique marks on it. Uh, it is pretty interesting. It is unique. It does have gaps where the beads would be numbered differently. So it is a full-fledged rosary, uh, without a doubt. Very nice, very unique. Again, 385 bucks. It's hollow pieces too, so those balls, the, the actual silver bead parts, are a hollow chunk of silver. So it's not even solid silver. So weight-wise, there's not a ton of weight. The design and the maker are the reason that this one went for almost 400 bucks. Now this one has to be my favorite. This is one made out of uranium glass, Vaseline glass. There's uranium in the glass, and when you put a black light over it, it does glow just like you see here. It kind of lights up like neon. Now, I've shown you some dishes in the past that were made out of the same material. With the lights on and with no black light around, it just looks like a normal set of green beads. These would have been from the 40s or 50s, chances are. They're not super, super rare, but most people have no clue whatsoever that some of these beads from this time are made out of uranium glass. And that is the only reason this set here sold for 220 bucks. If this is all it was and it wasn't uranium glass and it didn't glow as you can see, it would not have sold for as much money as this one did. It is marked Italy. Normally wise, this would be a less expensive cross. Those beads are very common. They made tons of that sort of thing in the 50s. But again, it's uranium glass. It is a unique pattern for uranium glass as well. This one is just spectacular. In my book, it's a really interesting, unique one. It would be almost hard to get rid of this one just because of the style, the type, and the glow. Now here's one that we sold just to give you an idea. Now I get questions all the time on do I clean these. Now that's an iffy one on some of the vintage actual uh, crosses, crucifixes like that. This Usually I do not clean them. I let the purchaser clean them. They can sometimes sell better though depending on the type of crucifix, who made it, if if it's cleaned. That's the judgment on these. You have to kind of decide on that one. Now, I sold this one for just over 70 bucks. 
It's been up for a little while, but this is a Creed crucifix. C-R-E-E-D. And that is why this one sold. It's not a super huge one. Uh, it's not super, super fancy. It is similar in construction to the Mexican one, the Texco one we just saw that said Art Deco. It has the same basic construction of the beads, which are just hollow silver balls that have a hole on either side to run the actual link chains through. If this was polished up, and again, I've shown you in another video how to polish these without doing anything other than setting it in some liquid, some water, basically, and forgetting about it. And this thing will shine up. Again, it's going to be a personal preference on some of these sorts of items. Anything military or transportation, I usually don't touch no matter what. Something like this, again, it may sell for a little better if it has been cleaned. Many times people who buy these will use them, so they will want them to be cleaned. Now, sometimes I do ask if they're interested in having it cleaned. It only takes a few moments. I can just drop it in a pan and off it goes. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Sometimes you don't. Almond Joy's got nuts. Mounds don't. Almond Joy's got real milk chocolate. Coconut and munchy nuts too. Mounds got deep dark chocolate and chewy coconut. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Peter Paul Almond Joy's got nuts. Peter Paul Mounds don't. Because sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't.